Today we're catching some sun and waves with Linda, a QHS member whose life is as vibrant and refreshing as a seaside breeze. What currents brought her to the sunny shores of the quantum shift? Let's surf behind the scenes to see the wave she's been riding. Hello, my name's Linda and um, I was raised in the last year of the 50s, the 60s and the early 70s. My mum was a European, she had blue eyes and blonde hair and my dad was a New Zealand Maori. So we are a part of a Maori tribe um, called Ngāpui from the far north of the North Island of New Zealand. I come from this beautiful place called Waiheke Island and uh, I was born there and my mum used to look after us while my dad went to work. Um, my mum said before I started school I'd go out with her when she was doing the planting and um, she'd look around to see if I was okay and here I was pulling the plants that she just planted out of the ground <laughs> um, and my dad used to have his own business in Auckland Harbour uh, he used to commute from Waiheke to Auckland every day on the on the ferry and uh, when there was boats in for him to or big ships in for him to sign right their name on there used to be people everywhere around where he was was situated and they'd be looking up at him while he's doing a sign writing on the on the side of the ship. Um, we used to I'm one I'm the second to youngest out of seven children and every Sunday um, the seven of us children and our parents would go up to our grandparents' place. They just lived, used to live up the road. For lunch every Sunday, um, we'd have a hot lunch. We'd have a hot lunch every day though. And we'd have a hot lunch at school as well during the week. Um, and I used to go out into the garden and help my granddad pick the, the veggies to bring in and for lunch. And uh, he also used to have carnations because he loved carnations. They were huge. And you could smell them outside his section before you even walked in the gate. And uh, down at our place, we had a quarter of an acre section full with fruit trees and grapes and oh, all kinds of things. We had a uh, veggie garden too. And uh, our belief was whenever we wanted something sweet to eat, we would to go to one of the trees and pick a fruit and eat it and we were allowed to eat as much fruit as we liked, whenever we liked. Um, we stayed there until I was eight years old and then the parents said we want you to have more friends at a bigger school so we moved to Henderson in Auckland and um, there I have mixed memories about growing up because some were good and some were sad. The good things were my mum used to have this big book, um, children's book, but it was the Bible. She used to read that to us every night before we went to bed and show us the pictures once she's finished reading the page. And um, at other times my mum and dad would come into the lounge with us and they would put on... Um, the song that they loved the most and danced to it, uh, which was um, She Wears My Ring. And you could see the, the love in their eyes and the joy in their hearts. It was really beautiful. But the sad thing was, when we first moved into this brand new house that was built just for us, um, the whole street said, we want you out. Because the, of the color of your skin, and my dad says, well, hey, we have saved up just like you did and we've bought this house just like you've bought yours and we're staying. And over the years, they've got to know us and they've got to like us. And uh, we had a, have a street 
with the little street that came straight down and at the bottom of it, it would go like that and have a big dip in it and go up the other side and it was perfect for um, go-kart races so the, uh, the St John's Ambulance used to have go-kart races there every year at the the rule was you were allowed to, you had to make your own go kart, and the four boys, our four boys, were used to help us three girls make our go karts, and off we go on this day out. And there was a guy that he was uh, Scots, and he lived up the top of the road. His name was Mr. Hill, and um, he used to walk along his backwards and forwards along his section, playing the bagpipes, and um, yeah, it was. It was really a nice, and the lady over the road used to bake every Sunday. You could smell it baking all over the road, all up and down the road. Yeah, it was yeah, it was a really good place to live. Um, I stayed there. We stayed there until I was nineteen, until my dad passed away. Now my dad was my best friend, and I went into this very deep depression. Um, for two whole years, I was in this deep depression. And, um, my mum would find me at the cemetery every night and she said, you have to leave Auckland. So I left Auckland, went down to Wellington to stay with my sister, and um, but I wouldn't stop. Uh, and uh, along this two years, I, I met this guy and felt pregnant and by the time I had this near-death experience for fretting for my dad, uh, my daughter was two weeks old and so I started, when I felt that way, I started picking her up and putting my love into her and that, that made me come out of the deep depression that I was in. I think she had sent to me to heal me and it worked. Um, yeah, so I call her my little gift. <laughs> when I was 21, my mum um, gave me a 21st birthday party, and then, then she died not so long after that. And so I lost both of my parents by the time I was 21, but um, uh, while I was growing up, by I used to say to my brother, oh, look, I can't do my school week. And he says, sis, there's no such thing as can't. If you look in the do uh, dictionary, there's only can. So there's no such thing as can't, so you can do anything you want. It's just that you don't want to do your school work. That's why you, you say you can't. I suggest you put love and joy in your heart to do it, and you might find it a better place to be. Um, I tried to do that. <laughs> um, I used to be shy when I was uh, when I was growing up, so shy that when my relatives came to to see us, I used to stay in my room and hide. And my siblings had to bring food in to me all day until they left. <laughs> That's how bad I was. But once I started my my work life, I kind of got out of that. It brought me out of my shell a lot, and um, I kind of liked manual handling jobs. So I had a job in, um, in the wool factories, like spinning and twisting on these huge wool machines. Oh, that was they were huge, and I loved it because uh, um, the lady that used to live next to us. She taught me how to knit when I was 10 years old and I loved it. And um, I used to buy my wool sheep and everything. <laughs> yes. Um, I bought my first house when I was 25. And I married my husband for 21 years. He died during COVID. I don't think it was a... A very successful marriage because it was very, is a very turbulent marriage. Mm. Um, I do have allergies. I can't eat any animal, animals or any byproducts of animals. Um, 
This happened when I found out, because I used to scream out, why am I here? Why am I here? I'm just, I feel like I'm just walking through life, just thumbling my way through life, no direction. And um, then I found out I was a light worker, and I thought, what's that? And uh, the lady says, so, look it up when you get home. So when I got home, I looked at him and I thought, no, this can't be me, this can't be me. And so like, that, when I read about what it is, my life changed completely. It was like going down from one road to another. And um, I started, I, that's when I went off all meat. I only used to eat pork and chicken, but I went off all of the meat products and I made all of the I couldn't eat anything no byproducts and nothing and then I started um, I found this place that put me through my three year course of um, being a spiritual healing practitioner through the Spiritual Healing uh, Found, uh, Federation of New Zealand and um, I can even do psychic surgery uh, so I went through that and, uh, and then Spirit said to me I want you to start not only healing on people but healing on travel paths as well and I'm sure they got me into traffic control um, keeping people safe on the roads and healing roads and when people with another traffic control say to me there's always accidents on this road. I would say, okay. And I would send healing to that road. Well, I sent healing to a lot of roads. And um, one day the, the spirit said to me, I want to meet you on the cloud. And I went up on the cloud and met them. And they took me through this really big um, tunnel of light. And we were flying through this tunnel line. And then, bang, uh, it was like, woof. <laughs> and uh, then we stopped and they said like okay you see this hole in the energy field yeah well it's just like a hole in the road if you don't fix it and fill it up it's gonna get bigger and bigger until it causes an accident so we had this is what you have to heal on heal and so I said okay then we went up and down up and down up and down and I figured it out later that I was to fly through these um, on these travel paths and um, go all over the world I went all over the world um, doing this and uh, I started going on cruises because they wanted me to do um, boat travel paths and all kinds of things and um, then they said we want you to start working for us full time now as a humanitarian and I thought well Hang on, I'm um, I'm a, I'm an um, an Aquarian, so I'm a natural born humanitarian. Of course, I want to do that, that full time, and um, so <laughs> it's been a, a funny little ride I've been on. Um, I do I do eat raw. I do eat most of my food raw. I have um, fruit and veggies and uh, nuts and berries and seeds and legumes. It's all, I, I think, the more natural you keep your food, the better it's going to be for you inside. And you should charge your food with energy, white energy, before you eat it even, to help, to help keep you well inside. Um, I want to, I don't like school at all. I, my education wasn't that great. When I was 15, I couldn't wait till I was 15 just to leave school. And um, I thought, well, I'll, I'll learn things as I go. And I did. Um, that's how I've been. And now today, um, I have my own, my own business and uh, disability and elderly support work and when I'm not doing that I like taking groceries and um, people's uh, food pharmaceutical um, things from the chemist to them and taking them to their homes and dropping them off and 
all that kind of thing, all their gifts they want to buy for Christmas, I'd go and give it to them, pick it up and take it to them, all that kind of thing. Um, I think I've been very successful in my daughter's upbringing. I was, when I was taught that I'm an unlimited being and I can do and become anything I want, I ran with that. And, and they said, and think big. And I ran with that too. I said, no, don't think small, think big. And um, I raised her with the same belief that she can be anything she wants and she can do anything she wants. Um, and she's got love in her heart and she, it shows in her work. She's an absolute beautiful being. I do think that I was guided by my guides and angels to QHS. I think I was meant to be there. Um, yes, I do feel strongly about serving humanity and that's what my biggest aim is. I think everyone in this world is so beautiful and everyone deserves to have the best life that they possibly can. And um, one of my projects is to bring out all these advanced technologies and give them to humanity for free so we can all go into the new world. Um, some people call it the golden age of mankind, some people call it the age of Aquarius, some people call it the heaven on earth, it doesn't matter what you call it, it's the same place. Um, and I do want to become a, a key companion in the QHS. Mm. And I do want, um, I'd really love to see my hair go back to its natural colour because this is dying. Uh, my hair is so grey, it's not funny because I went grey when I was 21, but I think that's a part of the Mary um, traditionally, you know, the, the makeup. Because I saw children at school and I used to ask these children, How old are you? Oh, I'm 11, and they were going grey. And, there was one day there was 10 and he was going grey and I even asked this little guy, hey, how old are you? He was nine and he was going grey. So, <laughs> and they're all married. <laughs> so I think it's just a part of it. I was just lucky that I, I could wait till I was 21 <laughs> to go grey. But um, my back when I was 16, I fell through a skyline and I uh, broke my pelvis. And I think that has come through to, to, to today and I'd like that to get fixed. And I have um, eczema on my, in my hair, on my arms. I'd like that to go away. <laughs> so, yeah, so, but when you are too busy doing your work and trying to, to live, it's, you know, you can't keep up with it all. <laughs> so, yeah, um, anyway, thank you. Thank you for that. Bye. Join us on the prequel where every story matters and every voice is heard. Because here at QHS, we're all about healing, learning, and growing together.